too much, but I want to illustrate for you some other methods for felting your wool ball that might actually make the process a little bit easier but involve, um, as I said, a few more bells and whistles. So what you can also do, excuse me with my soapy hands, is when you initially roll up that ball of wool, you can take a stocking, it can be an old one, it can have some holes or runs in it, you can use a knee high or um, if you're making a lot of balls you can use a larger stocking and you just want to tuck that ball in your stocking, tie it closed. I like to use a slip knot because that way um, when it's done I can just pull the knot out and the stocking stays intact and I can reuse it. Some people use a rubber band but when you cut the rubber band off generally speaking you end up cutting through your stocking and it can't use it again. Um, so once you've stuck your ball in your stocking you could add a second ball if you're making more than one. You could probably even add a third in here. Uh, but then you want to take the whole thing and you want to tuck it you'll excuse me into um, well actually before I get to that let me say you could then drizzle it with water and uh, your soap and you can felt it that way and you don't have to be quite as careful or worry quite as much about the wool shifting around because your stocking is holding it in there. But if you don't want to use your hands for felting and you want to get really fancy, you take this whole thing and you toss it inside of a pillowcase, tie a knot in your pillowcase, and just throw it in with your laundry when you're washing sheets or towels and the soap um, and the hot water that's already in your wash cycle or even warm water would be fine and the agitation is going to felt this ball of wool for you so you save yourself a lot of work and you're going to end up with a nicely um, tightly felted ball so after the end of your wash cycle this is what you would see you'd open up your um, your pillowcase there and you take a look I don't know if you can tell here on the camera but you would pull out your nylon and you can see some of these fibers sort of have, have worked their way through the stocking, through the nylon, and that's a really good signal whether you're doing it by machine or whether you're doing it by hand that your item has, has felted. So you want to pull it open. Whoops. Ideally you do not want to dip it in the water, but as I said, it's a forgiving process. It's not the end of the world. And you'll see your, your nylon, your stocking here has gotten kind of felted to your soap. So you want to pull it away, or I'm sorry, to your ball. You want to pull it away, and now you've got your core ball. Now you can see, as I said, that this has gotten considerably smaller from the ball that we started out with, but we're going to be adding color wool to it now. Okay, so now we've gotten our felted wool core ball out of our stocking, and we're ready to lay on our colored wool batting fibers. Now, as I've mentioned before, um, wool batting comes in a variety of colors. I like to wet felt with um, batting from Peace Fleece and again uh, you can check out crunchyparent.com to see our resources um, and find out the information for Peace Fleece and where to get a hold of your batting. So just like with our wool core, you want to pull off thin excuse me, strips of your colored batting and you want to lay them around the core ball rotating your ball to cover or in whatever design you wish to create. If you want it to be solidly covered you do want to make sure that all white spots have been covered with your wool. And when you're felting initially or if you're just wet felting um, you're going to want to stick with a pretty abstract design layout. You can lay on all sorts of different colors and kind of create some patterns if you want to do like a spiral or what have you. You can also use other materials if you have some scraps of yarn you want to wrap around to felt. Um, you can experiment with some of those things. But if you want a slightly more specific design, you can combine a little bit of needle felting with your wet felting. Now needle felting utilizes um, needles, I don't know how well you can see this here, that have tiny little barbs on the end. And what these barbs do 
when they poke at your wool is they make those fibers kind of grab onto one another. And that's another process by which you can felt wool. Now you don't need to needle felt a ball, although you certainly could needle felt a ball completely. Um, but if you want to make some sort of a specific design, you can combine the two processes and use your needle to lay on your other colors and to create your other designs. Um, I've done some fairly simple needle felted designs in the past, things like polka dots, um, maybe a, a large flower. Uh, here I can sort of quickly approximate a heart. And you want to, again, use your single needle in that fashion. Now, something to mention about needle felting is um, when you're felting across a broader area or you're doing less detailed work, you can also use what's called a multi-needle felting tool. And that's a tool that holds a number of needles. Here I have a six needle tool together. And that makes much quicker work of your needle felting process. But of course you can't be quite as specific with how you're felting things on. But it'll help your wool all hold together. Now at home you don't want to do it in the air. Um, see the risks I take for you. You'd want to have it on a flat surface and ideally you'd use a foam pad when needle felting. Um, so after you have your felted, your, or your, rather you've laid your colored wool on, you once again want to grab that nylon stocking and you want to tuck the ball back inside. Now because this is your outer layer, you want to be a little bit calculated with where you put that seam because it may make a seam or a line uh, on your design. Tie that back up. You can tuck it back into your trusty pillowcase and just throw that in the wash. And once again, when it comes out, we'll just untie. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Seems these uh, stockings grow in the wash. And you'll take out your finished product. Now, here in this one I've added um, this little sparkly fiber. It's called an Angelina fiber. Uh, and it's something that you can use to embellish your felting. It is not a natural product, but it can add a little bit of pizzazz. Here I wanted some sparkly stars on my night sky um, to complement my sunshine. So there you have it. Wolf felt ball. Fun, easy, captivating for children. It's a project that uh, young children can do, certainly when wet felting. And hopefully it's something that will bring a little bit of homespun kind of craft into your home using natural products and give you an opportunity to make things for your children or allow them to make things for themselves. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please come by crunchyparent.com and ask away using the comments section, or you can email us directly at crunchyparent at sbcglobal.net. We're always looking to hear your suggestions. If you have any requests for a tutorial, for a video tutorial that we can create for you, please let us know, and we'll do our best. Thank you so much. Enjoy and have fun. Bye.